Hello, I wanted to give you a quick guide to footnoting that might help. So let's look at this little sample that I wrote, and all of these dates and things are made up mostly. So Pablo Picasso was born in Spain 1893. This needs a footnote. So I would go in Word, insert, footnote, don't touch any of the fields. Okay, and see the number appears, and you would go, I'm making this up too. Oops. This is the name of the artist. So what I'm doing is Jennifer Klein wrote a book called I Hate Art. I'm going to always italicize the book title. The place of publishing was New York. It was published by Penguin in 2015, and I'm on page 11. Okay? That's all it is. That's for a book. He was only 34 years old when he painted Guernica about Hitler's bombing of a small town in Spain. So that's the problem. The title of the artwork. So let's put in another footnote right after the punctuation at the end of the sentence. Insert footnote. Don't touch anything. Okay, here's my second one. Say I'm still on page 11. I'm going to go Klein. This is called the shortened note. So you only have to give the full note with all of that information once. Every subsequent time you give me that one, it can be the shortened one. So I hate art, page 11. Okay, the painting is enormous, roughly 24 by 34 in size. Let's say I got this from someplace else. Well, or so we can, let's say the same place. Okay. Okay. If this is the same source and the same page and it's coming from the same place, I'm already on the shortened note, I can write IBID, which means the same source, same page. So it's painted in mostly grays and light blues, etc. This is my information. I am giving you this. So this is just my observation. It's not from a source. You don't need to footnote this sentence or that one. But uh-oh, some scholars believe the text was actually meant to imitate text, etc. Uh, depicted as news. That needs a footnote. It wasn't until Picasso was dead when the painting returned to Spain. He had intended it to hang in a museum there, but only under the condition that, okay, he outlived Picasso. This last sentence is just my information, but the whole rest of that, you can go about five sentences with one footnote as long as it's all coming generally from the same source. And remember, always put it into your own words, never copy and paste, or you'll get caught for plagiarism. So let's insert a footnote, and the, that footnote is going to copy all, you know, go for all that information that I got from this really interesting article, let's say insert and let's say this came from John Jones Martian Manhunter page 34 so lucky us I'm making up that it came from New York Penguin page 34 and let's see if we missed any. Ah, oh, Guernica has to be italicized. So I want you to see how before this was double spaced. Okay, so format, paragraph. Let's make this single spaced. This really isn't all that much writing, you guys. But once you double space it, format, paragraph, double. This is like half a page with a lot of footnotes. This is why I gave you a minimum of five footnotes per page. This is just a paragraph, but it's loaded with information. You can easily have 15 to 20 footnotes at the end of a page. So once you double space, you're going to get to 60 really easily. Let me show you something else. This is your title page, and we're going to eyeball it. So I'm going to say, Picasso Hated Cats by Jennifer Klein, Art 305. I'm going to say I'm in 
Tuesdays, one, one, four, one, one. I'm in that class. And I'm going to say it's 11 to 20. We're going to center this. And we're going to make sure it's in Times New Roman, right? Has to be in Times New Roman 12 point. And we're just going to eyeball it. So the title should occur about a third down, and my class information should be about a third from the bottom. So that looks kind of right. That's all it is. Don't overthink your title page. And since I don't have the title of an artwork or anything in there, I don't have to italicize anything. 12 point. Don't do anything fancy. Don't embed images or make little scroll work. Just, just that's fine. You need to page number. Oh, we need, we're missing our page numbers here. So insert page numbers, top of page. Okay. And if your page numbering, because this all has to be one massive document, wants to make the cover page number one, don't freak out. There really shouldn't be a page number on the first cover page. If you were handing it in, you'd be able to print multiple batches. But since this all has to be one submission and turn it in, don't freak out if your page numbering wants to pay, number your cover page. It's fine. I'll understand what happened. Your footnotes should appear in 10 point. And these also should be Times New Roman, but if you forget, don't panic. Um, oh, let's, whoopsie, let's do it this way. Times New Roman, uh-oh, what did I do? Let's cancel. So let's just make these Times New Roman as well. But it, again, if you forget, it's no big deal. Um, what was I going to say? If these turn up 12 point or if they don't have the line, don't freak out. Don't try and create it. I also want you to see that the numbers don't mean anything. Number one doesn't refer to Jennifer Klein's I Hate Art. Some people try and, like on page five, I'll be back to footnote number one. The numbers mean nothing. They just direct my eye to whatever you're referencing, okay? And look at this. In Word, if I say, you know what? This part should really be up here. Or, you know, I want to copy and I want to take this out and I want this to be my first statement. The footnotes will follow the paragraph. You'll have to do some rearranging of how these, you know, say like you accidentally got the shortened note up here or whatever. It doesn't matter. Just make sure that your footnotes, that the long footnote always appears before the shortened one. And But they in Word, that's why it's good to get Word. Um, it follows the paragraph. So say you want to show me the images that you're going to do. So your cover page appears first your six pages or more of text. Then what would come next is your cover page, new document, I mean, I'm sorry, your illustrations page. And you'd go, number one, Mandy, oops, the Marilyn, um, 1962, and your number two image was Albrecht. Four horsemen, 1500. Okay, it would probably be four. Okay, always italicize your artwork titles. Always make sure everything's in Times New Roman. And always make sure everything's sort of tabbed correctly. So all you would do here is your next page would show me Marilyn. And the page after that would show me Four Horsemen. And then the page after that would be your bibliography. Right? And your bibliography would be in Times New Roman. And it simply lists your sources alphabetically. But instead of saying John Jones, Martian Manhunter, you'd say Jones, comma, John, Martian Manhunter, blah, blah, blah. And it would omit the page information. I have a link for you. Um, I have a link for you in your 
pages. See how up here is where you found your syllabus? This whole next module is how to do your propaganda museum assignment. Your bibliography, how to do your bibliography is here. So if you're wondering on how to cite a book or a journal, you just go to this notes on citations and you go, oh, how to do a book. And you click on it. Got it. How to do a periodical, which is like a journal, which you would find on JSTOR. How to do an interview. Uh, or say you watch something on Khan Academy, Smart History. Or if none of these really feel right, you could simply Google Chicago style how to footnote a museum information. Okay? So that is how you do that. I hope this was informative and we'll talk soon.